So as I said, it's the uh, first week of school for so many of us. Uh, I don't know if uh, you have children or perhaps grandchildren that have started school this week. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. I'm very grateful of the school that my kids go to. Uh, my daughter, Abby, jumped into the car really excited after the first day, uh, just telling me how much she really loved school and she couldn't wait to go back. And as a, as a parent, I was very excited because this is kind of the start of her educational journey and I wanted it to begin well. Uh, but the truth is that it doesn't necessarily begin well for all of us. And I came across uh, a feed this week where uh, there were a number of parents putting pictures uh, of their children uh, and their experiences the first day of school. And we've got a couple of them for you uh, here this morning. Uh, there's one, I don't know if you can see, of a kindergartner wrapped around the leg of the mother who refuses to actually go inside the school uh, as she's being drug in. And there's uh, this one, which I really love. It's a beautiful first day of school picture as you get the kid ready and then a picture at the end of the day when the child came home uh, not experiencing what they thought they would experience. And then there's uh, this one, I think, which also seems to demonstrate that perhaps not everybody has a wonderful first day of school experience. And not to be outdone, there's also parents who uh, have toddlers um, who, and I don't know if you saw this, there's a book that came out called What to Expect When You're Expecting, and it, it got followed up by this book called uh, What to Expect in the Toddler Years. Uh, you can't really see it behind the markings and the torn pages that the toddler undoubtedly ripped out of the front part of that book. Um, but there's something about this notion of how these things go through, of how we experience the initial actions uh, when we embark on a new journey. And we must, as it says in the book of James here, persevere. And perseverance is something that can be quite challenging at times. Perseverance is something that we have to kind of work through and go through and, and engage in. And in the book of James, the, the author here is writing to uh, this community. We've been going through in the last month and talking about Ephesians, and in Ephesus there is uh, a church that is there in one city, and the Apostle Paul is writing specifically to that city. Now in James it's a little bit different because uh, the author of James is writing this book out to a wide variety of people. You see, it's written in James chapter 1, verse 1, that this is written to the 12 tribes in Diaspora. And basically what that means is that the tribes of Israel are living outside of their homeland, outside of the area known as Israel and Palestine today, and they are living in all these different places. And so the author of James writes this letter uh, to each and every one of the tribes that are living out in the world. You see, it's been a little bit difficult for them because as they've gone out into the world that they are in, uh, a number of them have had to figure out if they're going to adapt into their new culture or not. And what a number of people had done as they live out in other countries, outside of where they were brought up, uh, many of them really have adopted this idea that, well, as long as I participate in my faith in my head or in my heart, then I'm fine. And they, they had gotten this idea that so long as we carry the faith of God, the faith of our ancestors, the faith that we believe in, and as long as we believe it in our hearts and as long as we have it in our minds that we are okay. And James is writing to them specifically to kind of counter that. He says to them within this first book, uh, within the book of James as a whole, that they must bring their faith into action. And that's what we're talking about in the month of September. The lectionary is drawing us through uh, the book of James. And in one part, we're looking at faith lived out in action. And I think that that has a lot to say to our church today, to our church communities as a whole, that our faith is something that, might not, that should not just be internal, but it is something that we must live out in action each and every day. We get into the passage in James here, and it begins, and it, it starts to talk about the idea of perseverance. You see, the people that James is writing to, they are living in a time where they're trying to understand their identity. They're living in a place where they don't know if they're going to go back to their homeland. They don't know what the next step in their life is. And they don't know if they're supposed to assimilate into this new culture. And so James writes to them and he tells them, do not consider it bad when you experience trial, but consider it pure joy. Consider it joy when you experience trials of every kind, knowing that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. I think a lot of times nowadays, we talked about this in Sunday school this morning, it's, it's very easy for us to want to give to our children an easier life than that which we had. 
I think each and every one of us lives with that hope. We, we get raised in this hope and this idea that we have lived a certain way, but we hope so much better for our children. And so we, we try to make their lives as easy as possible. But within that, we kind of ignore the fact that trial happens. As much as we want to protect or shelter our kids, as much as we want to make sure that they're okay or safe, that they're provided for, that they have everything that they could need, things in life just happen. I was sharing with Anthony about the Old Testament passage from Ecclesiastes that he was uh, reading from this morning. I said when, when I was in seminary, it was really interesting because we got into all the minor prophets and I had my Old Testament professor and we dove into each one and each one talked about uh, what they were specifically writing to and about and there's this beautiful context and an underlying hidden message for each one of them. And then we got to Ecclesiastes and it read a lot like uh, what Anthony read for us this morning. And I said, we got to the end of the book and I looked to my professor for some kind of great phenomenal wisdom about what it is that this book has to offer. And he says, yeah, that's pretty much, uh, that's it. Uh, good things happen, bad things happen, that's life. <laughs> and then we moved on. And it, it blew my mind, but in part, it also reminded me of what the reality of our day-to-day -day life looks like. That's the, the reality of our lives is that we, we want to think that, well, if we're doing good, then only good things will happen to us. And if we're doing bad, then only bad things happen to those people. But the reality is that the ebb and flow of life happens to each and every one of us. There's ups and downs, there's highs and lows, and we must work our way through each and every one of those circumstances. I came uh, across another story this week that uh, I really love. There's a, a man named uh, John Kralik. John Kralik was living in Southern California as uh, an attorney. And he was having a really hard time. He was just going through his second divorce that was getting finalized. He was working as an attorney there and he had his law firm uh, and his, a lot of his clients weren't paying him. And so he ended up this one year uh, in the mid 2000s, uh, really unable to, to make ends meet. He wasn't able to provide his employees with the bonuses or with their end of year paychecks the way that he wanted to. There were so many other things that were just going wrong in his life and he didn't know what he was gonna do or how he was going to come back out of it. And so he had read a couple of books and he decided that he was going to go out on New Year's Day and he was going to take a hike up in the hills uh, north of, of L.A. And as he goes out and he gets uh, into the hills, he begins to ask himself, what is there for me to be grateful for? What is there for me to be thankful for? And he's kind of wallowing in the midst of this trial that he's going through, this period of his life that is bringing for him a lot of struggle and angst. And at the end of it, he, he kind of had a revelation. And he said, okay, if, if I want to be thankful, then I just need to try and identify things to be thankful for. And so at the end of his hike, he began to go back home and he said, okay, I'm gonna commit this next year to writing 365 thank you notes. He wanted to write down a thank you note each and every day to be able to say, okay, there's something that I can be grateful for for today and I need to identify what that is. There is a blessing that has been given to me. There is something that has been given to me. And unless I recognize what that is, I'm just going to keep remaining in this same place. And so he committed for the next year to write these thank you notes. He was going to find something that he was thankful for, someone that he was thankful for, and write it down. And so each and every day for the next year, he wrote these thank you notes. And he continued this practice the next year and the next year. And he began to see something really change. He wrote a book about his experience, and in that book, he, he wrote, gratitude presses outward, and that creates these good feelings in the universe. He said, I've come to learn that a lot of that comes back to you eventually. I was mesmerized when I heard that because I feel like I had heard those words in some different way before. And I realized those words really kind of come from scripture. Luke chapter 6, verse 38 really talks about that idea, give and it will be given unto you. That notion of how we live our lives, the way that we go out into the world, what we decide to provide and do in the world comes back to us in the way in which we have given it. And it's an amazing thing, this, this sense of perseverance. Because any time that we encounter this time where we feel like we are going through trials, we really have two options. And one is to sit and feel as if those trials have a purpose or not. Later on in the passage that I had read, there's this one portion that, that talks about this idea that uh, people who are in low positions should rejoice when they are brought up high. 
And people who are in high positions should also rejoice when they are brought low. And I thought about the first verse, and I said, yeah, I really agree with that. But then I looked at the second that said people that are in high positions should be proud and happy when they're brought low. And I said, well, let's, let's stop there. <laughs> because we, we love it when things are going bad, and then all of a sudden they turn and transform and become better. But in those moments of our lives where we a little bit of humility, where we need to be reminded of our place in life, and we need God to come in and have those moments and those ebbs and flows of life where struggle and trial and temptation happens, it's harder to rejoice. It's harder to celebrate. It's harder to notice when the things in our life don't really go the way we had hoped or expected or planned for them. But in chapter one of James, we are reminded of this part of the passage. Persevere. That persevering provides for us a true trial and testing of our faith. There's this one beautiful kind of abstract idea we talk about in church concept that uh, when we pray and we ask God for patience, do we think that God will just grant us patience or will God put us in circumstances where we will have to learn patience? In the beginning of James chapter one here, it says, if anybody lacks wisdom, they should ask God who gives generously to all. And I think that what that provides for us is this idea that God does not just dole out wisdom to each and every one of us as much as God puts us in circumstances where we're going to have to learn that wisdom on our own. As much as we want to try and shelter and protect and guide and keep perhaps the children or the grandchildren, those that are in our lives, the period of life comes where they will have to learn for themselves, where they will have to experience and gain their own sense of wisdom. And in those moments of trial, in those moments of shortcoming, in those moments where we feel like we must persevere, let us rejoice. Let us rejoice because we know that God is working and building something within and through us. And that through the testing of our faith, something comes out. It's a beautiful reminder that we have for how the Spirit of God continues to move and work in our world. And my hope for you this week is that as you go out, the things that you are going to experience in the ebb and flow of life, the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, whatever it is that you come across, that you will be receptive to hearing the Spirit of God make himself manifest to you now and always. Amen.